G'day, we hope that you are loving season five and we are excited because this is Tasmania and it starts in a couple of weeks. The best ultimate road trip itineraries that you can choose to enjoy your time when you book your trip and make your way down here to this spectacular state. In summertime. <laughs> We're dodging the rain. We are so excited to be bringing you our first ever live stream on YouTube next Sunday. That's the 16th of January. It will be at 6.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, the same time that we always release our videos, and we would absolutely love you to join us. We will be answering all of your questions about traveling Australia, experiences, destinations, life on the road full time, how we survive together in 17 square meters 24 7 and everything in between so if you've got a question drop it down below in the comments of this video mm -hmm. we will be compiling a list of all the questions we receive and hopefully we'll get through them all when we see you guys <laughs> next week on our live stream all right grab yourself a good beverage or two we look forward to seeing you then bye, bye. Coming up in this week's episode. We're on the Nullarbor plane! Woohoo! Oh, you got a few things there, Katie? <laughs> one night! Right, everyone happy? Good. Good. actually the very first petrol station and the very start of the air highway on our way across the Nullarbor. The fuel here is $1.77.8. That's for diesel per litre. I haven't checked, but I think it's gonna get over $2 a litre as we travel across. So anyway, I'll fill up as much as I can here and then we'll just see how we go. Uh, I've had this question a lot lately. We have a 140 litre tank. We basically replaced what was, I think, the Hilux standard comes 70, uh, 65 or 70 litres, and we changed it to a long range 140 litre tank. So that's why when we show you those numbers on our fuel, it looks so incredibly high, the cost. So anyway, we'll fill up and we'll hit the road again. <laughs>
How are we going in here, guys? We are good. Hey, Dada. What have we got for lunch? We have just whipped up some quick sandwiches, salad sandwiches. Excellent. Where's Jasper? Jasper's Is he gone? Here. No, he's got a mouth full of... Um... Hi. What? Cucumber. <laughs> and cheese. All right, I'll see you in the car. All right, we are ready. We're coming. Very festive, isn't it, up there? All right, this is a pretty good spot, isn't it? Rest stop, have no idea where it is, somewhere on the Nullarbor. Anyway, we've uh, probably done about 350 Ks. We'll probably get another couple of hundred in and then call it a day. Time to get Jasper in the truck. You ready, mate? Yeah. I've been feeling so small. Watch the clock ticking off the wall. But tonight I'm letting it go Spend my coin for sure I'm gonna be myself Or I could be someone else No one's stopping me now I'm gonna skip my breaks I'm gonna make mistakes I just wanna feel alive It's just what I do when I'm out so How you going, Jessica? Yep, good. Are you good? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're here. We're at our destination. All right, here we go. Two dollars and five cents a liter. Ow! Oh my god! So it's weirdly sound like Michael Jackson. Anyway, let's try that again. Ouch! Two dollars five cents a liter. We made it to Cockle Biddy. 620 kilometer travel day, seven and a half hours. Pretty well just drove. We stopped a couple of times, wee stops and a uh, little bite to eat, but pretty well, very easy drive. Other than that accident that we saw with the truck, who knows um, what happened there on the longest, straightest road in the world. Uh, so who knows, fatigue, dodging something but to see a truck uh, rolled over like that's um, unusual I would think on, on a road like that in daylight hours anyway Kate's gone to um, speak to them about us camping out the back which is great we'll get uh, a good feed and a good night's sleep how are you feeling mate good are you excited yep I'm just driving up the MSA gear and uh, <laughs> pretending it's like Santa Santa's sleigh Okay, there you go. Uh, a fairly 
good rest stop as far as resting. Yeah, look, the Cockle, Cockle Bitty, I just really like saying it. The Cockle Bitty Roadhouse has everything that you need. Like, yeah. So good. Pull in for fuel. They actually have a, a restaurant there that was really busy with the truckies when I went in to, um, to pay for our overnight fees. Yeah, the fees are $25 a van. Uh, there's everything's powered so you you don't sort of have the choice of just parking out the back and um, it's just a flat fee twenty five dollars so yeah. we decided to just talk into the power anyway it's yeah. you know if it's there yeah uh, charge everything up yep and then we just cooked up and had an early night in the van so we could get away nice and early there is a couple of uh, rescue wedged tailed eagles there which is an interesting story yeah yeah Avery, really, what they've built there. They've for done these a good job. Birds. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, they... and super friendly staff, I have to say. Like, you know, being out in the middle of nowhere, it's easy to understand if you come across people who maybe are a little bit tired or a little bit over yes. it. Yeah. But um, both the lady who sorted out our van fees and also the gentleman when I paid for the petrol, super friendly. Well, he's, he's happy because he's charging $2.05 a litre. <laughs> so he's, he's laughing all the way Ouch. to the bank. Yeah. Don't be kidding. Yeah. Remote location, remote prices, we've said it many times. All right, uh, just shy of 300 kilometres, 290 kilometres to the South Australia, Western Australia border. Yeah. Uh, quarantine checkpoint, one of the three borders that we will be crossing on our way to Tassie. A bit of navigating to do. Adelaide's just uh, become a hot spot for some states, not not Tassie yet, but we potentially will be in the, be uh, driving a big arc around there. Uh, depending on what we have to do, we'll do it. Yeah, keep our eye on it. That's for sure. Uh, we're also going to stop at a place called Eucla. A couple of stories to share there. It's about 20 kilometres or thereabouts from the border, and the actual fruit and veg quarantine we believe doesn't happen till St. Juna. Yeah, look, everything I've read online says don't get rid of your fruit and veg until you get into St. Juna because that's where the big um, biosecurity quarantine point is. We don't know if that's an official Yeah, we will let you know. Point, but anyway. All right, we're good, Jasper? Yeah. All right, mate, you take your time. Just kick back in the back there. Best seat in the house, I tell you. Perfect driving conditions today, hey? Yeah, 20 degrees. Love it. All right, let's crack the tunes. Bye. 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 Alright, we're only 20 kilometres from the South Australian, Western Australian border crossing. $1.99 here. How about that? I thought it was going to go up and it hasn't. We are literally halfway now along the Nullarbor and it is the first point that we're going to get to start to see the Great Australian Night. And we're also going to go across here and check out the Nullarbor Nymph.
Okay, we just crossed the border. We are officially in South Australia. Woohoo! Great. Fantastic. Interestingly, though, there are no border checks there. In fact, the quarantine and border check is literally 500 kilometres up the road at Sejina. That just really gives you a good idea of how huge this country is and how long this road is. Oh, yeah, I know. It's incredible, isn't it? When you're travelling in this easterly direction, anyway, there is border control there at the SAWA border, but that's for anybody, mostly truckies, wasn't it, pulled over yep. heading into WA. Okay, so we did uh, fill up at Eucla, and that is because it is the cheapest fuel along the Nullarbor stretch at $1.99 a litre for diesel. And in fact, the the proprietor there came out and said, I've got the app, it's $2.20 plus as soon as you get to Nullarbor, which is actually a, a location along this road. So, yeah. ouch. <laughs> I reckon. So we uh, we can actually get all the way to Sejina where the petrol prices will start to dramatically drop. Yeah, okay. good news. Far out. We have spent so much in fuel over the last few months. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's hurting. Yeah. Okay. The Nullarbor Nymph. Is anyone out there saying yes? You know what I'm talking about. Legend. In my teenage years, I, I heard about the Nullarbor Nymph out in the, the uh, schoolyard. <laughs> and I was telling Katie about the Nullarbor Nymph legend, and she doesn't believe me. So I've had her Google to see what she could find, and this is very cool. Better yeah. than I could remember the it's story. It's an awesome story, actually. This article that I found is an Australian Geographic article that was only written in February this year. Yeah. And it tells the story of the Nullarbor nymph, which is this mysterious blonde, long blonde haired woman who was captured, photographed, running wild and naked and free with the kangaroos. And it became a media sensation. It was 1971. The Australian media, the international media yeah. caught onto this story. It spread like wildfire. This article says that media even travelled out from the US and England <laughs> and came out here to Eucla, which, let's face it, is basically in the middle of nowhere. Look, if someone told me there was a naked blonde woman <laughs> clad only in a kangaroo skin running around the, the Great Australian Bight, I, I could Come see out. why people would head out here. Come out for a snap. Anyway, what is so awesome about this story is that there is no nullable nymph. It was the brainchild of a gentleman who was working in PR at the time. He was passing through. As the story goes, he was unable to pay his motel bill. <laughs> so he promised the proprietor that he would come up with a story that would put Eucla on the map. And so over a few beers that night with some local kangaroo shooters, they hatched this plan for the Nullarbor Nymph. And what I think is the most incredible part of this story is that they convinced the partner of the motel proprietor, a lovely lady by the name of Janice, they convinced her to strip off naked, Neither. put on a, kang a freshly culled kangaroo skin, wow. and run naked at 1.45 a.m. so that they could snap this photo. And also, they even went to as much trouble as to send her out knowing that a tourist bus was passing by so that there would be witnesses to say, yes, <laughs> we saw the Nullarbor nymph. <laughs> Okay, look, at the end of the day, the Nullarbor Nymph is still helping to tick the cash registers over at Eucla. Oh, gosh, yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, the story, actually, five months later, it all came out and they, they confessed, no, actually, it was a big hoax and we made it all up. But how awesome is that? I love it. Do you know, getting around Oz, more often than not, when you get to these remote places, they need a landmark or they need a story. They need something to make people actually stop. And, you know, the longer time you spend, the more yeah. money you end up spending somewhere. Yeah. Um, so. We've yeah. seen yeah. all the world records, haven't we? Like yeah. some of the craziest things that I mean, Kalgoorlie had the, the world's tallest bin. Yeah. 
Oh, look, more Nullarbor nips, I think. <laughs> Too it's funny. funny. I, if, you, if you do check this article out, it's, it's actually really well written. And I love that the writer of this article tracked down Janice, who is 75 years old, and yeah. fondly recalled all the fun that they had hatching this hysterical plan. He talked her into a reenactment. <laughs> no, he didn't really. Okay. Wouldn't shall, be quite the same, though. Shall we get on with it? We are going to see what happens. We're, you know, we don't really 500 plan, kilometers we? this at Gina, so we've already done 300 kilometers today, but we started early and it is perfect weather, perfect yeah, driving beautiful. condition. There is no one on the road. Literally, the only vehicles that we have seen are trucks. And most of them going, going the this other way, way into WA. Yeah. 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 All right. Jasper's happy. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, South Australia. Australia. Just like that. Boom. Yeah. And we've got five hours before we actually have to get border checked and assessed and actually, processed. Yeah, we've got some fruit that we need to eat. Eat up. All right, let's do it. boy. Great Australian bike! We made it! <laughs> All right. Hmm. Now where can we go? Here we are, we are here. There's the border. There's, that's called head of fight. That's the head of fight. Let's go, check it out. Hey Jasper, how's this? Pretty amazing. Yep, we're at a cliff side. Let's stop. What's it part of? Um, the great Australian <gasps> fight. <laughs>
All right, let's check out what we can see here. Oh, okay, what do we got? Camels, wombats, and kangaroos. For the next 88 kilometers. 88 kilometers per hour! Great Scott! On 88 miles. Oh, okay. <laughs> Where's he going? Come on, Daddy! Right on. Oh, he's gone too fast. Hey, look at this, a Penong wishing well. A swing pump. Sit on that. And we're gonna fill up with a little, what happens? Oh, yeah. Hey, look. <laughs> How's that? You're swinging, <laughs> it's making the water pump. <laughs> Good on you, Alan McCall. There we go, we are at Penong and it is pretty good price here, $1.66.9 per litre for diesel. We filled up, we needed 100 litres, that cost us $170. Kate has just told me she's going to go back through our WA fuel bill, we are in South Australia now, but get a an exact total of what it cost us how many kilometers we did what kind of uh coverage we got i guess liters uh per 100 kilometers so that we can let you know how that all panned out it, it is up there next to food with our most expensive item every week so we'll let you know how that panned out how are you feeling back there jasper you kind of fantastic <laughs> as always as he sounded tired as he said it though, didn't he? Okay, we're going to, we think, travel a little bit less today, maybe 600 kilometres down the track. Yesterday was 692 kilometres from Kokobidi here to Penong. Uh, we're now going to travel from Penong to, I think it's called Port Germain. I could be pronouncing that incorrectly. Anyway, that is about 600 clicks down the road. We have lost two and a half hours. Or should I say gained? Either way, it is definitely not 
uh, as early as we think it is. It's a lot later, it's two and a half hours later. So, all right, we'll get on the road. Kate's just gone into pay, donning her mask, of course. Now we're in South Australia and we'll be on the road. Here we go. Here comes Mama. The mysterious masked lady. <laughs> Hit the road, Jack. Let's do it. <laughs> exactly. Mum's in the back checking everything in the van with the quarantine officer. Quarantine track? Quarant quarantine. Oh, quarantine. That's it. It's the checkpoint. It is the checkpoint. Well, that that was easy, wasn't it? Here and comes there Mama. Is the border. Yeah. That's the border. Yeah, the border's right there. Thank you. Oh my good morning. gosh, good morning. It is chilly. Started at six degrees this morning. It's getting us prepared, Del. For Look at us. We've got matching jumpers. Yeah, back in jeans and boots. Love it. <laughs> okay, we've got uh, the last leg of our journey. We haven't spoke to you for a couple of days because we've literally been just driving. Yeah. Uh, there's been a, a few little issues around Adelaide and COVID, so did a bit of a detour. Yeah, we've had quite the uh, zigzag scenic route. It was definitely scenic, and that's when you sometimes have some of the best travel days too. Oh. Clare Valley, just stunning. Oh, well, that whole route from mm. where we were near Mount Remarkable in Melrose down to Bordertown. Yeah. Just beautiful country. Okay, so just a quick backtrack then. Uh, Cocklebitty, we ended up staying at Penong, mm -hmm. the windmills. How good were those windmills? How Australia's largest windmill. How massive was that, Jasper? Yay! Yeah. Huge, that's right. Uh, and then Mount Remarkable, which was a tip off from another camper that said, mm. no, don't stay at St. Germain, go to Mount Rem Remarkable. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was beautiful. It was the beautiful. showground there, great stop, Rolly mm -hmm. the caretaker. So friendly and character. helpful. Yeah, definitely a good one to add to the list. Okay, so literally 3,000 kilometres in the last week from Perth to Border Town. Mm. It's a good Australian naming system again. It's on the border. We'll call it Border Town. Yeah. It's kind of crazy to think, not even this time last week, we weren't even in Kalgoorlie yet. Yeah, that's true. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay, so, you know, have we have we rushed it? Yes. Did we have to though? Yes. yes. Uh, for us, in order to get our our sale date and and uh, and get onto Tassie and you know do our best to not uh, be stuck in I guess restriction or hot spots, mm. we've completely bypassed that. Yeah. Which is you very do what fortunate. you got to do. We do. Okay, 450 kilometres is our last travel day today. We're going uh, to cross into Victoria shortly and. Don't pass go, don't collect $200, just keep driving straight to the ship. Yeah, so another border crossing today. I mean, they've been fairly uneventful so far, haven't they? There was not a single police presence at the South Australian border checkpoint, mm. uh, which is actually in Sejuna, which is, seems strange because it's you know, almost 500 kilometres into the state, mm. but with one road in and out, yeah. I guess that's all you need to do. No one. Uh, quarantine was straightforward, the lady was lovely. Oh yeah, with the biosecurity, with fruit and veg, absolutely. They obviously go in and check the van, mm. which, which they do at every checkpoint, yep. uh, but no police. We were very surprised. Mm. And I don't anticipate mm. we'll see anybody on the Victorian border, because no, Vic, Vic is open. Vic is open. Um, 
there's obviously still a lot of uh, cases yeah, happening well, there. There's like a thousand cases a day currently. Still so still classed as a high risk for the entire state as far as Tassie's concerned. Hence why we have to do a drive straight through and onto the ship. Yep. Transit passed? Is Transit that passed, yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's us, transiting. Be an easy day today, really. Take a deep breath in South Australia. <laughs> yeah. Drive. <laughs> Yeah, 450 k's compared to what we've done over the last few days and, and crossing the Nullarbor, so. It was pretty cool when we woke up this morning. I said, how are you, Jasper? And he said, I'm excited. Why are you excited, mate? Because we are going on a Spirit of Tassie. We yeah. are. And if you want to check out our Spirit of Tassie video from the first time we head down there, yeah. it's honestly one of our highest ever viewed videos yeah our top 10 things to know before you go and that will be very current as of i think in the next week when tassie actually opens its borders fully absolutely uh, it is a great one if you're planning to go to tassie and if you aren't planning to go to tassie why aren't you planning to go to tassie mm -hmm. it is the most spectacular state yep all right let's go <gasps> here we go right everyone happy right. Yep. good let's do this Oh, you got a few things there, Katie? <laughs> One night! We're going to Tassie! Hey? We're going to Tassie! Oh, hasn't Mum told you? You're going to wait here, just Mum and I now. Hey. I'm coming! <laughs> Come on! That's so me! Okay, this is called Williamstown Road and there is loads of parking, five minutes from the Spirit of Tasmania. Of course, next year they're moving to Geelong or the year after. But anyway, if you're traveling 2022, this is where to park. Legally, I should add. Baby. <laughs> Here we go. Look Here at we that. go up the ramp. How good you view, Jasper? Yeah. If you don't want anything, please turn off your headlights. Yeah. It's a bit choppy out there. Yeah. Not too bad though. Hopefully the weather gods are good to us. Smooth sailing, Jasper. -y. Yeah. Good job, Daddy. Here we go. Straight down beside these big truckies. Next week on Family Travel Australia. G'day, we hope that you are loving season five and we are excited because this is Tasmania and it starts in a couple of weeks. The best ultimate road trip itineraries that you can choose to enjoy your time when you book your trip and make your way down here to this spectacular state. In summertime. <laughs> 
We're dodging the rain. We are so excited to be bringing you our first ever live stream on YouTube next Sunday. That's the 16th of January. It will be at 6.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, the same time that we always release our videos, and we would absolutely love you to join us. We will be answering all of your questions about traveling Australia, experiences, destinations, life on the road full time, how we survive together in 17 square meters, 24 seven and everything in between. So if you've got a question, drop it down below in the comments of this video. Mm -hmm. We will be compiling a list of all the questions we receive and hopefully we'll get through them all when we see you guys next week on our live stream. All right, grab yourself a good beverage or two. We look forward to seeing you then. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching. Please do like, subscribe, and share our channel. And if you'd like more information on full-time RV travel and living, visit our website, thefeelgoodfamily.com.au. There you'll find loads of free resources, our weekly podcast, caravan cooking recipes, our monthly Go RV magazine articles, and much more. We look forward to seeing you next week. Take care of yourself and your family and happy trails. Question is, is where is the bird? Strange. Might have uh, been let set free on the Great Australian Bite. Free budgie. Okay, we are at Fly City. I was born in Easter Road in a one day open fly. Hey, jingle bells, jingle bells, it's two days until Christmas. Well, actually, we're two days into Christmas. <laughs> I was born in Easter Road in a one day open fly. Woohoo!